Men, are you going through struggles? Well, let me introduce you to a man who's gone through the exact same struggles as you. His name is Jesus. Stay tuned. You know, many times we think of Jesus in his role as Messiah. We think of him in his uh, his role as the uh, the Comforter that came back, as he mentioned in uh, in John. Uh, we think of him as having the fullness of deity in him in bodily form. We think of him as the expressed image of the invisible Father. We think of him as God manifest in the flesh. But let's think about him as a man. He called himself the Son of Man many, many times, implying that he was a man, son of Adam. Philippians 2 7, he says that he emptied himself and came in the likeness of a servant. And uh, the next verse says that he, uh, uh, he humbled himself. So what does that mean? Well, to empty, he emptied himself, it means to render void. He took his godly nature and canceled it out for a time by his own humbling, his own set limits and boundaries for himself. Uh, it's the Greek word uh, uh, ken o o. Then we have the other Greek word, which is uh, doulos. It means that he emptied himself of his property rights. So he took all of his authority, all of his power as God, and voided it out for a time and limited himself to the boundaries of mankind. Uh, the word uh, for likeness is uh, hom oim oma. It means to be made like something else. It's not an exact copy, so he's not, you know, a lot of people uh, say, you know, because it says he, there was the first man Adam brought in sin to the world, the second man Adam redeemed men from sin. He wasn't exact, he wasn't an exact copy of Adam, as some say, he wasn't, exact cop, wasn't an exact copy of anyone, but he was made like us, in essence. He was just like us as a man. He was an individual, but he was just like us, in essence. So he limited himself to the rules he had for mankind. He was a man in every shape, fashion, and form. Hebrews 4.15 says that he was tempted in all manners or in all ways like we were. That word tempted is um, uh, pirazo. It means to test or to prove. It can be translated as temptation uh, in a negative form. But I don't believe that is the way it's used because all throughout the scripture it is talking of testing and proving like gold in a furnace, like burning the chaff away, the chaff away from uh, the wheat plant. You, It's a purification. It's a positive thing. So it's a testing, a proofing. Okay, so he was tried, tested, proven in every point just like we are. So he was a man just like we are. And he was tried just like we are. So are you struggling in your life, your relationships? Are you having problems at home, at work, with your friends? You know, Jesus had two of his closest friends betray him. One sold him to the uh, sold him out to the Romans at the behest of the Jewish elite 
Another one denied he even knew him and cursed the person that said, hey, I've seen you with him. When he was hanging on the cross dying, only one of his friends was there with his mother, comforting Jesus' mother. Just one. Out of all those friends that followed him for, for his whole ministry, just one. Then, he knows what it's like as a husband that has an unfaithful wife. He knows what it's like to have, be a husband who has a wife who is unruly, who is not uh, treating him with the proper respect that he is due, regardless of, regardless of uh, how well he treats her. Going back to the Old Testament, we know that he is the one who had the covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Jeremiah 31, he had to divorce Israel because of uh, her adulteries. And he almost did the same for Judah. But he said Judah returned, but not with her whole heart. And this is evidenced in Matthew 23, 37, where he stood on the hill looking down at the city and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, oh, how I've uh, longed to gather your children under my wings like a hen does her chicks. But you would not allow me. So he wanted to provide protection and love to Judah, the wife that he still had. While that was a spiritual thing, as a man, he still had those feelings. He knew they were his, even as a man. And his wife that he had, was still in covenant with, continually was rejecting him, not giving him respect, not allowing him to love her, not allowing him to protect her. So he knows what you're going through. How did he overcome it? How can you overcome it? You know what he did? He died. He died not only for the wife that he still had, Judah, who did not return to him with her whole heart, rejected him, but he also died for the house of Israel, whom he had had divorced because of her adulteries. He died so that she could return. You can look at my um, my video on baptism. I'll link that in the description. Also, um, look at uh, Jeremiah. I know I keep saying Jeremiah 31 in almost every one of my videos. And I haven't actually read from it. But that's so you will actually go and study it for yourself. Take a look at my video on daily bread. So he knows what you're going through. As a man, as a human, he knows what you are going through, your struggles. He knows betrayal. He knows indifference. He knows rejection, just like you. He knows longing and loneliness, just like you. And how he overcame it, he died. And if you don't handle it through him, it's going to kill you too. He died so we wouldn't have to. You can study it for yourself. If you want assistance, help in knowing how to allow him to have his death work for you so you don't have to die in that misery, send me a message. Think about that, study it for yourself, and you have a good day.